G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to Pouring Your Heart Out. Sorry I haven't been with you for the last few days. I've had to work. So annoying. <laughs> right, today is brown day. Brown flip cup pour. Now this was the last one I did. This was the turquoise or teal. It may look more blue through your screen. Uh, so I've got blue coming up. Um, I've got reds, sort of red and orangish coming up. And what else haven't I done yet? Have I done purples? Can't remember if I've done purples. Anyway, today's brown. <clears throat> so, I've mixed up my colours. I have burnt umber. These are all the Montmartre except for the black. I've got white. That is uh, raw sienna. This one on the end is burnt sienna. And then the, the black and the white. The black is the artist loft because I think my, my black in the um, Montmartre is getting really old and it's doing weird things. So I'm, using, I'm not using it. I'm going to have to throw out what I've got left <clears throat> and um, order some more doing weird things so let's get started this is a 30 centimeter by 40 centimeter canvas 12 by 16 inch and I know that I need about 700 grams of mixed paint <clears throat> so I've got one two three four five colors I've got 70 grams of pouring medium and 70 grams of paint and then I've had to add some water um, the brown was really thick had to add quite a bit of water to it and not that one this one this one was really oh this one was really lumpy <laughs> i actually had to mix it up and then i poured it through a sieve to get rid of the lumps because it was they're just some of the colors are just old you know i haven't used them for so long i haven't done my classes for like a year with the covid thing so the, some of the colors are a bit old and getting really thick so i had to sieve it but it's good now so the pouring medium is my usual 60 percent elmer's glue oil 40 percent water and then as i said i mix it one to one and then I have to add water as needed. Spot on. Now I've shown you the um, the eight second rule, haven't I? So because people say add water to consistency, like that's that's really difficult to understand. But I do this: hold it up and I count to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I expect it to break. See, it broke there as in the trace that, or the, the paint that runs down into the cup, it broke, snapped off at eight seconds. Don't go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's, let's try the, um, let's try this one. <laughs> it's a nice slow, like one cat and dog or one Mississippi. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, it's got to bounces back. Eight seconds. That's the eight second rule. That's what I like for my consistency with the flip cup pours. Some people would like it thinner, maybe if they want bigger cells. Uh, let's go five drops. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, oh, 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 oh. Why are you running out so fast? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, get in there. One, two, three, four, five. I've only got half the amount of black. I made up my black and then I took half of it out and put it into another cup for tomorrow when I do my next colour because the black can really take over. So I only use half the amount of black. As, as I said, I make up the full amount and then I put it into another cup. So I've only got half. And it's only got probably a drop less. So I wonder what these are going to look like. I've kept the white away from the black because I don't want grey. So I've gone dark, light, darker, dark, light, darker again. As I always do, just so that you can see the rings in your cells. If you put these two colours next to each other, you're not really going to see the rings in your cells, like the, a cell inside a cell, because the colours are too similar. So just try and separate your colours. Light, dark, light, dark. The white I keep a little bit thicker because the white tends to disappear. All right, so there we go. <clears throat> Enough chit-chat, let's get to layering. So as always, half 
of what you've got in your little cup for the first layer and then you should have enough in your cup for your second layer. Now you can just pour it down the side if you want to but um, I like to drizzle that way I get the paint on the top rather than just a big blob on the side but if you aren't confident with drizzling like this by all means just pour it down the side like you would when you're doing like a um, I don't know, like a ring pour maybe, you pour the paint down the side. Oh, I'll have to get my spinner out and do some more ring pours. Hey, it's been a while. I've been concentrating on doing some resin projects, but I probably need to get back and do some more acrylic pouring. I want to do some more pearl pours because a lot of people can't get extreme sheen paints at the moment. They're sort of a bit... A bit hard to come by, so I thought I'd try some different paints and see if we can get some pearls with um, other paints. What do you think? Would that be helpful? Anybody interested in that? <laughs> now this colour here, this tends to take over as well. May not use it all, we'll see. It's one of those colours that just, it's a bit of a bully and it really takes over. So now the rest of my brown, my dark brown, I'm putting in use it all up. Try and make sure your cups are e sort of equal. The poor last cup he tends to have not as much because you use all your paint in the first two cups so just be aware. Try and make them all as similar as possible otherwise when you flip your cups you might have one big one and then over here a little tiny one so try and keep them as similar as possible. And the rest of the white. You can see it's relatively thick, you know, it just sits on top of the other colours. If you're doing this and your colours are sort of falling straight through, then they're too thin and you need to thicken them up a little bit. If your paints are too thin, um, when you go to tilt your canvas, everything will just get stretched out of shape and you'll end up with big wonky cells. So try not to make your mix too thin and the rest of this one it's just practice really isn't it i mean i try and help you out as much as i can with you know the consistency which is the most important thing it's not so important you know which pouring medium you're using and which paint you're using but it does come down to the consistency of whatever it is you're using which is much more important all right a little bit of black I haven't even used all of that a little bit left keep that and a little bit of you I don't think I'll use all of you like I said he's a bit of a bully it's like orange you know when you're using orange in a flip cup pour it just takes over it's about a third left put you aside alrighty here we go we're gonna flip as I said in one of my previous videos if you're not confident with flipping um, put some water in a cup and um, go and flip yourself a cup of a half a cup of water in the kitchen <laughs> maybe in the sink or next to the sink you know the draining board next to the sink go practice flipping that's a good way of doing it that you're not going to make a huge mess everywhere all right, I'm just going to throw these out. Put them over here in my bin, my trash. I've got my torch, my blow torch, ready to go. It's almost empty that one, but these ones you see, you can just if I can do it. The top just unscrews. Actually, it might be covered in paint. <laughs> you just turn that nozzle like that, and then you flick that. And there you go, and then off. Pretty easy to use. It's a big flame though, so you need to be careful. I have got a um, fire extinguisher behind me on the on the shelf, which I always keep in the studio, just in case. Touch wood. All right, are we ready? I've got my corner catcher organised. If I want to use that, it's just a piece of cardboard. Radio. Move you out of the way for a minute. Flip and drag. And a little bit of extra just there on the corner just to wet those corners. And I'll put you there. 
Oh, look, we've got cells already. Yay. Let's let the paint sort of run out a little bit. This bit here where you get that sort of rounded bit from the paint that's coming out the bottom. Oh, it might be dripping down from the top. I'm not sure. I can't see. But um, we'll tip that off anyway. We won't be keeping that. Now, let's see if I can get more of it down here. Put a little bit back there. Just whatever you do, don't go back up through the middle. I'm putting this on the side because it's going to get tilted off anyway. And I'm just wetting the canvas with it, basically. But you can see it's really stripy and you know, maybe it's a bit muddy because it's gone in, it's gone back out, it's gone back down, it's come back out. It can be quite muddy. So if you're going to use it, just put it on the side where it doesn't matter. It's going to run off the edges anyway. Just put this in the bin. Um... All right, oh, that's looking really good. I'm just going to turn it around, as I always do, because this is the area that I want to get rid of first. Looks like we're going to have big cells in this one. It's all that water I've added to thin out my browns. Corner catcher, come back. Go around to the next one. Take the weight of the paint over to that corner, touch the corner, come back, and then you can move your corner catcher away. Now the weight of the paint, where's the weight of the paint? It's still down here. I'm going to get some big cells, you guys. Alrighty. And I was saying this colour was going to take over, but the other one's more taking over. We'll see what happens when we torch. We get some pretty cells coming up. Right, here we go. So not too close. It takes a little while for the heat to travel all the way down through that thick paint and make its way back up to the surface with the silicone oil because the oil wants to come to the surface. You know, oil rises with water, so it wants to come to the surface, but it, it just takes a little while. So just be patient. Don't go overboard with your torching. What I always say, just go slow. You can always come back again and torch again. Don't get too close or you'll get a big cluster and you'll more than likely get caterpillars as well if you get getting too close. It's a bit bubbly today because I've added so much water and I've stirred, stirred, stirred. I've got a lot of little bubbly bits that are popping. I'm just going around again concentrating the heat where I want it. Oh, look, I got too close there and there's a caterpillar. Told ya. Don't get too close. I don't know why the caterpillars come up when you get too close. I, I don't know. I haven't worked out the science behind that yet. It's got something to do with the oil getting too, too hot and then it just... I don't know. I, I don't know. I find that if I get too close, I get caterpillars. It's those long cells joined together, if you don't know what a caterpillar is. Okay, I think that's probably enough. I can torch again afterwards if I need to. Put that away. The big stripe of that orangish one, isn't it? What's that one called? Um... What's it called? Burnt Sienna. Stripies. All right, here we go. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going left and right and left and right as we head down. We don't need the corner catcher this time because we're going to go over the corners. I want to see if I can keep my white. I like the white. Now how I said the white doesn't show up very much. We haven't got a lot of white. Probably going to lose it. Now this is the time where you just have to take your time. Go really slow. Try and get everything to sort of run off at the same time equally. You can wet your canvas like that. It'll make it a bit easier for the paint to flow. But we are going to go over the edges, over the corners. Come on, corner. Over you go. Back over to that corner. Over you go. Got rid of some of those big blobby cells. 
and I think that's about it. Yeah, <laughs> my mix was a little bit on the thin side for this one. Like as I said earlier, the um, the cells are going to be a bit bigger. So once you've gone over, just leave it, okay? If you start bringing it all back again this way, you're just going to overstretch all these cells, and they're already big, so we don't need to do that. And just run your finger underneath. You can use that paint to do your corners if you've missed out because the weight of the paint that's hanging onto the side and down the bottom it's going to pull your cells down it's going to pull your paint over the edge so just clean off the bottom gently gently use that paint just to cover that corner if you need to I can't see that corner but alrighty now do I want any more cells yeah, this lighter brown has really taken over the raw, uh, yeah, raw sienna has really taken over. I thought it was going to be the other way around. I'm just going to put a few little tiny cells in here and there. Just to make up for the fact that we've got such a lot of big ones. Just for a bit of interest, a bit of size variation. a lot of bubbles well this is going to have lots of cells so you can see the little ones that have come up there I, I like them I, I think it adds a bit of interest to have the different sizes I my torch is running low it's not as oh I got too close look at that so some of the bigger cells are a little bit blobby and wobbly but um, that's just what happens when you have your mix a little bit on the thin side. So I've added some more little ones in there and in there. So that'll do. What do you think? <laughs> Yay. Do you like it? I'm not really a browns kind of a person, but I do need to do all the colours for you. Right, let me get my glove off and I'll bring you down for a close up so you can have a little look. Gonna put you on pause while I walk around the table. 